who are the Israelites? This is a video that I wanted to do for a long time, kind of like a start here, a welcome video, uh, giving you a breakdown or an outline of our faith, what we believe, who are the Israelites, giving a timeline and kind of hopefully, I'm hoping that it gives you some assurance and strengthens your faith and give you more understanding to know who we are and what we believe. So who are the Israelites? Israelites are the blacks scattered throughout the world on slave ships, right? The blacks that were scattered throughout the world on the transatlantic slave trade, we were scattered to all nations on ships. We were scattered to France. We were scattered to Britain, Germany, America, Russia, China. We were scattered to South America. We were scattered to Central America. The Blacks scattered throughout the world on slave ships. Those are the Israelites. We can prove it using several scriptures, but a signature scripture that we like to use is Deuteronomy 28 and 68. Uh, in Deuteronomy 28 and 68, which explains that the Lord will send you back into uh, into Egypt on ships. Now, Egypt, that word Egypt means bondage or slavery, right? So the, world, the Lord will send you back into Egypt on a journey I said you shall never make again. There you, uh, there you offer yourself to your enemies as male and female slaves when no one will buy you. Or there you will be sold to your enemies as male and female slaves, depending on what translations you are reading. We believe that many of the true biblical descendants of Abraham are the people currently referred to as black, African American, Negro, Sephardic, or etc. Evidence from scripture cited in next point of belief below, which I'll get to in just a moment, that have been scattered throughout the nations of the world, the current Ashkenazi Jews are imposters and dwelling in the place of the true Israelites. Though some still live there today in Israel, the majority of the true Hebrew descendants are scattered because of the curses described in Deuteronomy 28, but one day will dwell in the land again in peace, according to Zechariah 14. Now, before I go any further, just a quick note. The true biblical Hebrews, I've done a video on it. You can check it out right there. I'm not going to digress too much into that. We believe the true Hebrews are as stated above because of the overwhelming scriptural evidence demonstrate that Messiah, Moses, Joseph, at one point passed as black Egyptians. And also the prophet Amos recorded the master Yahweh himself stating that his people were like the people of Cush or Ethiopian. That's in Amos 9-7. Jeremiah stated he was black due to famine as opposite to a white person become pale from famine. Song of Solomon 1-5 states that Solomon was a black man. This is just some of the many evidences that speak opposite to the teachings of modern churches and false histories being promoted about the true Hebrews. And I'll tell you another thing. My Savior is not a Chinese guy. He is not an Asian guy. He's not a Mexican. He's not a white guy. He is black, people. And you need to deal with it, all right? Because when he comes back, he's going to be coming back in, in the color of his people. I'm, I'm just, I just believe it all my heart and soul. And that, that the true master is black man. And I hate that if that just, uh, you know, that eats you alive and, and you've got a racism problem and all that, but you're just going to have to get over yourself because the uh, Most High loves us all. And um, and it just is what it is. And uh, and if you don't acknowledge his people, you are not acknowledging the Messiah and you're not acknowledging the Father. I believe that because his people, it, 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 you know, it, there's a blessing for those that bless them and a curse for those that curse them. So there you go. That's how I stand on it. I am not here in this video to convince you who the Israelites. I am here to tell you who the Israelites are. If at this point in your life, you can't read God's word and adhere to yourself to what you've read in his word, meaning humble yourself to what you've read in his word, then you're not a person who I can speak to, right? Because what God's word said for me is final and is true, right? No one can disprove this fact that these people that I have just told you, the blacks scattered throughout the world on slave ships, are the Israelites. No one, not a rabbi, not a pastor, not a preacher. If they could, they would have already done so. But there's just a prefla of scriptures. There's too many scriptures talking about us being scattered throughout all nations, Joel 3 and 1. Scattered through all nations, uh, uh, Leviticus 26, 33. But I will scatter you among the nations and will draw you out of uh, uh, and draw a sword after you as the land becomes desolate and cities are laid as weight. So you're going to be scattered to all nations. And your land's going to become desolate and your city's going to become are going to be laid to waste, right? We go on and on and on about the scattered scriptures, about pe these people being scattered from all na to, to all nations. And then you got the scriptures about them being gathered back from all nations, right? So these who are who the Israelites are. We're the only people in the entire world 
right now at the end of the world in the last days who fit these scriptures. No one else in the last days right now, not even the people living there in the land of Israel. And let's go to that real quick too, because those people, uh, let's see, let's go to Revelations 2 and 9. I know your afflictions and your poverty. So I know that you are being afflicted and I know that you are in poverty, yet you are rich. This is God talking to the Israelites. So he says, you're at the end of the world, you're being afflicted and you are in poverty, but you are rich, meaning your internal heritage is that you are rich. Your internal heritage is that you are kings and queens and that you're going to reign. But right now your condition is affliction and poverty. Look at what he goes on to say. And I also know about the slander of those who say they are Jews, but are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. You've never even seen a black person in your entire life uh, uh, worship in a synagogue, right? So we know exactly who this verse is talking about. Billy Graham read this verse. We know exactly who he was talking about, right? Uh, several white pastors have read this verse speaking about those who say they are Jews, but are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. I am not an Edomite. Okay, the Edomites are those people dwelling in the land of Israel today. Now, the other bunch is Gentiles, is Shachanazi Jews. Um, they, they, they want everybody to believe they're the true Hebrew. They're not. And those people will be there until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. That's what I believe based on Scripture. The true Hebrews will be regathered out of all the nations of the earth from the four winds and brought back into, their, into the new kingdom one day when Messiah returns. Now, that's how I see things, all right? Um, I, I hate it that people believe that um, those posers that are put there by the world terrorist organization called the United Nations and propagated the lie um, that by the uh, modern-day Christianity, I hate it that that's the case. Those people are posers. Matter of fact, my heart just loathes them. Um, and, I, and I can't help that. I mean, I, I try to love my enemies, but I mean, my heart just loathes those people. The poser state of Israel, I got no respect for. I, I, I can't, I, furthermore, I'd rather die than serve them people. It would be like if I said I was black ish, I'm Jew ish, right? So I'm kind of Jew, but I'm not a Jew, right? And God says that those people are the synagogue of Satan. This is what the scripture says. Matter of fact, I might have to put the video in of one of the Jewish guys, uh, 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 ben, uh, ben Shapiro, saying that he hates Jesus and that Jesus is anti Semite. Right. <laughs> and said Jesus is anti-Semitic for, for that for that exact for saying that right there. My point is, who cares? Let them live their life, let them do whatever they need to do. That's not something that you need to concern yourself with. What you need to concern yourself with is who are the true biblical Israelites, because that would mean that the curses and the blessings will both pertain to you or pertain to them, right? So how do we get here, right? How do we get to this point? The Israelites, God gave the Israelites the laws and the commandments. He gave the, Israel, the Israelites the laws and the commandments. He gave the commandments to the Israelites, the laws and the commandments. Matter of fact, let me read a scripture on that. Jubilee 2, 31, and the creator of all things blessed it, but he did not sanctify all peoples and all nations to keep the Sabbath, but he did not sanctify all people and all nations to keep the sa Sabbath. Listen to this, but Israel alone, them alone he, he permitted to eat and drink and to keep the Sabbath thereon on this earth. And the creator of all things blessed this day, which he created for a blessing and holiness and glory above all days. Listen to this. This law and testimony was given to the children of Israel as a law forever until their generation. I had to read that because even in my understanding at the beginning of this, I would, I, I, I when you learn that you're an Israelite, I believe one of the first things you try to do is group everybody else into the Israelite camp with you, is make everybody an Israelite as well. Because we as Black people, and it's just the honest truth, I'm just keeping it real, we have a heart of love. We have a heart of acceptance, of accepting all people. You go to any Black school on the planet, you see white kids hanging out with us. You see Mexican kids hanging out with us. You see all kind of other origins and of people hanging out with us. But yet, if you go to other schools, like an all-Mexican school, or you go to an all-white school, the Black kids are, are pushed off into a corner, right? This is just a fact. But our, our I'm just telling you what it is. 
You go to South Africa, they in, try to integrate into, I mean, you go to Africa, they try to integrate into our societies. We come to their societies, you go to Britain, America, France, and all the uh, white societies and white European nations around the world, and we are pushed into a corner. This is just a fact. Maybe it's because they fear us, I don't know. Maybe it's because that um, uh, we are a threat to them in some kind of ways, I don't know. And honestly, I don't care. I'm just telling you the facts, right? I'm not here to convince you of who the Israelites are. I'm here to tell you the facts of who the Israelites are and what's going on in the world. So how do we get here? right? We got here because we are a disobedient people. Our ancestors were a disobedient people, and we are a disobedient people. And all the way back, if you read the whole Bible from the cover to cover, all you see is God choosing the people and these people constantly disobeying the things he tells them to do, and him constantly cursing them or punishing them in some kind of way for them disobeying the things that he told them to do. It starts at the beginning. Let's go to uh, Genesis 15 and 13. And, uh, and he said unto Abraham, know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a foreign land that is not theirs, and they shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years. And also that nation whom they serve will I judge, and afterwards they shall come out with great substance. The greatest thing about the time we're living in today is we're living in this time. 1619 to 2020 was 400 years. The moment you walked into 2020, March 2020 to be exact, and just so you know, in the Hebrew calendar, March is the beginning of the new year for God. So it was actually exactly 400 years. The moment the 400 years started for God or ended for God, judgment came unto this world and this world has never been the same so if you ever doubted that this 400 year scripture was speaking to a specific people that was brought here on slave ships in 1619 well you're living in it right now you're living in it you're living in the fruit of it right now because he said that they were going to afflict them for 400 years and then he said that nation whom they serve will i judge so judgment is now coming upon this late nation judgment is seven years right judgment is seven years right now i'm not going to get too deep into that and he said and afterwards they shall come out with great substance this is what we believe i'm gonna do a whole another video on what we believe we believe that we, uh, we're coming out with great substance we believe that christ is coming to redeem a specific group of people I can, I can prove that. We believe that Christ is coming to redeem those that need to be redeemed. We believe that he is coming to save those who need to be saved, right? That are in a position that need a savior, right? <laughs> I, I want y'all to hear me and hear me good because this is, this is, this is a lot in one message. I want to try to make it quick. I'm looking at my, I'm looking at the time. I want to try to make it quick. So we are the Israel talking about the Hebrew Israelites that are coming up to the truth of their heritage and realize this is their book. This is written about their family. You can easily see it from beginning to end that this is about one people. One people that the nations can cleave to and become reborn and become an Israelite. He's not the God of the Gentiles, the Hudim, the Greek. He's only the Elohim of Israel. He says that the Hebrew Israelite movement is leeching off the Christian church. Isn't that the biggest, most hypocritical comment you've ever heard in your entire life? Christians have done nothing but leech off the heritage of another people. They, they practice replacement theology and put themselves as the people of the book. Yahweh has a people that he was sent to. And it's the lost sheep of the house of Israel, his firstborn son. That's who Yeshua was sent to. I'm I am not sorry to tell you that Abraham, the father of the faith, was not a Christian. He was a Hebrew. I am in no way apologetic to tell you that his son Isaac also was a Hebrew. And I am no way going to tiptoe around the fact that Jacob, Jacob, was a Hebrew whose name was changed to Israel as one that struggles with Yah and overcomes, who gave birth through polygynous marriage to the 12 tribes of the house of Israel. All right, so this video is about black people and how they're actually superior, not just physically and all this and, and genetically and all that stuff, but actually they're the chosen people. Not all black people, but a lot of them. And even I could say, I don't know if I could say most of them, but many of them. Specifically the people that are living in America, and specifically the people who have been sent all over the earth on slave ships, those people are superior, even in the Most High's eyes himself, because those people are the Israelites. And there's a scripture that says, not only it says if you bless them, you'll be blessed, 
there's also one that says you have to cling to them or you can't even be saved. So for one, that means acknowledging who they are, obviously. And for two, it means reading even their own scriptures because these scriptures are not for everyone. They're for them, and if you want to <laughs> follow after their, their God, of course, he is the God of all, uh, but he's not, not all people are his people. <laughs> you see how that works? So if you want to even be saved, you need to get in line and you need to step behind his chosen people, okay? And the reason that this earth is gone behind Satanism, I mean, I'm sorry, racism, <laughs> is because we live in a satanic world and Satan ex exclusively hates these chosen Israelite black people more than anyone else and he hates them and he wants to bury them. Because not only he hates them because they're chosen, but he hates them because literally, like I just explained, they're your and my hope to be saved. Of course, we don't need them, but salvation is for them and it's for all who cling to the truth that came down through them and for them. In other words, they're first, you're second. This is explained not only in the Bible, but also all of the books that should be in your so-called Bible, but were not allowed in by the Freemasonic organizations that rule and control the earth because they don't want you to know all that truth. Okay, so. Uh, let's first go to Deuteronomy 28 and, and, and 1. If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands I, I give you today, the Lord will set you above, high, high above all nations on the earth, and all these blessings will come upon you and accompany you and obey if you obey the Lord. So God gave us uh, things that he would do for us. If he, so he said that if you listen to me, I will bless you. If you obey my commandments, I will bless you. If you disobey or not, <laughs> If you do not obey my commandments, then I will curse you. And you jump right down to Deuteronomy uh, 28, 15. And it says, however, if you do not obey the Lord, your God, and do not carefully follow all his commands and decrees I'm giving you today, all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. And you will be cursed in the city, cursed in the country, right? We curse when we go in the city, we curse in the country. We cursed in Los Angeles. We cursed if you go in the country in Kansas. You, you understand what I'm saying? Um, if you go on and on and on, in, 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 in a lot of the curses, he goes, he goes and uh, talks about a lot of different curses that he would put on us. He says that the fruit of our wombs will be cursed. Our crops in our lands will be cursed. Poverty for us, what we're living in today, poverty is a curse. Poverty is a curse. I'm going to get into one of the ones, uh, Deuteronomy 28, 47, I'm sorry, because you did not serve the Lord your God joyfully and gladly in a time of prosperity. Listen to this. Therefore, in hunger and in thirst, in nakedness and in dire poverty, you will serve the enemies that the Lord will send against you. There's not another people on the planet who's been sent on ships. I'm going from curse after curse to show you that we are the Israelites. The Israelites are not those who are blessed today. The Israelites are those on average who are cursed. We got Jay-Z, we got Beyonce, but us on average, uh, black people on average are cursed with generational poverty. Black people on average are cursed with generational crime in their neighborhood. How in the world, since you've been in America, since you've been in America, never how old you are, think about the history of black people in America. How have we been in poverty the whole time we've been in here? How have our neighborhoods always had crime the entire time we've been here? We are cursed by God, not by the white man, not by America. He said the Lord will send these enemies against you. We are cursed by God for disobeying his commandments. Do you understand? Jeremiah 418, your own conduct and actions have brought this on you. This is your punishment, how bitter it is, how it pierces to the heart. This is our punishment for what our ancestors did against God. I want you to understand that this is our punishment for what our ancestors did against God and for what we continue to do against God. Let's not just blame it on our ancestors. We continue to be disobedient to God's word, his laws, his commandments. So that's how we got here. We are cursed people. Now, what's funny is, right, when you talk to some uh, black people about these things, right? Oh, I just refuse. I, I just will refuse to believe that I'm cursed. But you hear people all the time talk about generational what? Curses, right? Black people have generational what? Curses, right? We can easily come up from out of these curses because God said, if you follow my commandments, then you shall be what? Blessed. Listen, let's do the Romans 28 um, one again. I'll say it again. If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands I give you today, the Lord will set you on high above all nations. And all these blessings will come upon you. So you will be blessed, right? Oh, there's another scripture too. It's in the Jubilees, uh, and, and it talks about if we turn 
it's one in the Jubilees is many, but it's, it talks about if we turn back to God that he will bless us. I thought there's also one in Isaiah. Hold on. So Second Chronicles 7, 14, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. I will heal them. I will bless them if they turn from their wicked ways. Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. And Yahweh shall bring you into Mitzrayim, Egypt again with ships. And the way of which I said to you, you shall see it no more again. And there you shall be sold to your enemies for slaves and female slaves, and no man shall buy you. And that is what happened to the regal class of the house of Judah. And I want to give you a brief history. I won't go into it too much, but I can't just make that statement because there'll be people that will push back. But I want to give you a brief history on slavery. <laughs> I was just amazed, I gotta tell you. I mean, when you come to America and you talk to people about slavery, you can, you, you talk, you can talk to black people about slavery, white people about slavery, and, and they'll, they'll give you all this history on slavery, and it only goes back to the 16th and the 17th century. And you're like, don't they teach you the history of slavery? Why? Ask the bloody question. Why are they only teaching you the history of slavery as far back as the 16th and the 17th century? Why are they only going that far back? Because they don't want you to go farther back than that. Because then you'll actually find out the truth. But from the 16th and 17th century, we'll teach you about slavery. You've got to go further back and you've got to understand and, and question why do they do this without, throughout the whole of America in all the public schools? Why do they only go back as far as the 16th and the 17th century to talk about slavery? We've got to go further back than that. Because Islam, Islam designed infernal slavery and then the Ashkenazi Khazars those who say they are Jews and are not are the ones that marketed it and the regal Negro nomads exiled from the kingdom of Judah were the main recipients of it at the hands of the indigenous black Africans. Because you've got to understand the regal class of the house of Judah came down from Israel and they came into the land of the black Africans. And the black Africans resented the regal class of the house of Judah in their land. Because they had laws, they had customs, they had civility. And they were a regal class of Negro that came down into Africa. And later on, it was the Ashkenazi, the Islamic slave traders as well, that then worked together with the indigenous black Africans to enslave the regal house of Judah. This is what we've got to understand, but you've got to go back before the 16th century to understand the roots of it. So we're going to see, as we dig into this, where this slavery came from. Because it was really a system that was very, very well crafted. There was Islamic masters, and there were white Ashkenazi Khazar ship owners. There were the buyers and the sellers. And they're not going to fill you in on all of this, but really you've got a four-tier system. Number one. You have the Negro nomads that were exiled from the kingdom of Judah. Number two, you had indigenous black African hunters that resented the regal Negro nomads that had come into their territory with their own customs, with their own laws that were different and would not assimilate into their tribal culture. They were their own tribe. They were the regal house of Judah. And number three, you had Islamic trappers that worked with the indigenous black Africans to trap the regal Negro house of Judah. 
And then you had them sell them to the Ashkenazi ship merchants, along with many Portuguese and British Ashkenazi. So hopefully I convinced you or at least have given you multiple scriptures to show that the Israelites currently today are living under curses. They have 400 years of these curses and then there's judgment of the world and then they're about to come out of this now. God always gives them a timeline, always gave, gave, gave us a timeline. Our, our, our ancestors that were in Egypt, they were there 430 years. Our ancestors that were in Babylon, they were there 70 years, right? And he said, now us, we would be here 400 years and then there will be a judgment and then we coming out, right? And we're going to come out forever, right? Listen to this, uh, Je uh, Je Zephaniah 3 and 19. At that time, I will deal with all who oppress you. I will rescue the lame. I will gather the exiles. I will give you praise and honor. Listen to this, in every land where they have suffered shame. At that time, I will gather you. At that time, I will bring you home. I will give you honor and praise. Listen to this, among all the peoples of the earth. When I restore your fortunes, listen to this, before your very eyes. So your fortunes are going to be restored right here on earth. So the Israelites are cursed. We are cursed. We are a cursed people because our ancestors and we continue to disobey God's laws and his commandments. He made us, we was a set apart people. That's why I read for you the scripture first in Jubilee that he set us apart, us specifically to follow his laws, his commandment. We were set apart people from the world and he wanted us to follow his laws and commandments really to be an example to the world of how you're supposed to conduct yourself with this God, this creator of all things, how you're supposed to reverence him and worship him and how you're supposed to follow him and how he would bless you if you do these things, right? But we have refused to do that. We've been a stiff necked people throughout the generations, right? And so God has went up and down with us, up and down and up and down with us. And now we're here at the end where he's gonna set the record straight and how he's gonna do that, Jeremiah 31 and 33, this is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel, or this is going to be the new covenant. When you heard of the new covenant, the new Testament, this is what it is, right? After that time declares the Lord, I will put my laws in their mind and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. This same verse is also quoted again in Hebrews 10 and 16. They're just quoting from Jeremiah when it says the exact same things. And I will make uh, with the, uh, after that, I will make with them a new covenant. I will put my laws in their hearts and write them on their minds. God is saying that he's about to drop his spirit on us. And, uh, another scripture, I just say, he's going to pour his spirit from on high. You know how when he dropped the Holy Spirit on them in Acts, he's going to drop the Holy Spirit on us. And this spirit is going to put his laws in our hearts and our minds. So it's going to change our character. We're going to have a different character than we have right now to where we walk upright. We walk upright in God's laws and commandments and his statutes naturally. It's naturally on our hearts and our minds. So we don't need to even go look. It is another scripture said there would no one would have to, uh, there would no one have to preach to them or teach them. No one have to tell their neighbor, know the Lord, know the Lord, because they will all know me. We're all going to know him. We're all going to know his laws like verbatim. We're going to be spitting them out of our mouth like, like Moses, like a gross sandwich. We're going to know it verbatim, right? That's what, what, what this is all leading up to. And this is all leading up also to, like, as I mentioned to you, your fortunes being restored. But they're going to be restored be because your your the, the, his laws are going to be written on your hearts and in your minds. And I hope you're understanding that, right? So this is the Israelite story. This is who we are. We are the Israelites. Oh, there's another one last scripture I want to give y'all. As we hear, I'll go ahead and read this one for y'all too. Joel 3 and 1. In those days and at that time, when I restored the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem, I will gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. There I will put them on trial for what they did to my inheritance, my people Israel, because they scattered my people among the nations and divided up my land, right? So the entire whole world in times prophecies is about the fact that these people were scattered throughout all nations, right? They were scattered throughout all nations and their, and their land was divided up. So God is gathering these people now to give them back their inheritance, right? And then we're gonna all, uh, then we're gonna reign with Christ a thousand years. I'll get into that another time. I'll get into that another time because I've already went well, well over my time. They changed his name plus his image too. So they, they changed made a whole, his name. They made, a whole character. they made a whole characteristic. Now check this out. They even took away all the antiquity of the ancients and replaced them with the European versions. They literally took away all the dark skinned versions of all the apostles, the artwork, all the antiquity and replaced it with European fair skin counterparts. Changing the vision of Yeshua completely and giving him the face of Caesar Augustus. That's the guy that you see with kind of like the brown hair perm.
like this. We can even type in Abraham right now on Google and it would show all these European men. Now, we gotta ask ourselves, why is that a problem? It's a problem because why is it popping up so much? When we know that, they, number one, they wouldn't even be close to European, but number two, they'd be more resembling of African people because everyone from the Fertile Crescent beyond that were black and brown people. Let me give you another scripture, Hebrews 2 and 8. And put everything under their feet and putting everything under them, God left nothing that is not subject to them. Yet at this present, we do not see everything subject to them, but we do see Jesus who had, who was made lower than the angels for a little while now crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death so that by grace, by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. Jesus who had taste death for us, for our sins, so that he can be our sacrificial lamb unto God because we have the laws was given to us. We're the ones who sinned against God, right? So now Jesus has died for our sins, right? So that now we can be <laughs> repaired onto God, rejoined into God's family, right? And so that we can be who we were supposed to be on this earth, which is God chosen people and an example to the rest of the world. Jeremiah 29, 14, and I will be found to you, said the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity and I will gather you from all nations and from all the places where I have driven you, said the Lord, and I will bring you again into the place whence I have caused you to be carried away. So God is going to bring us back to our homeland, back to our homeland. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. Tobit 13, 5, and he will score just for our iniquities. And listen to this, and we'll have mercy again and will gather us from all nations among, listen to this, where he has scattered us, right? Again, a people that was scattered. We can go on and on and on and on about this people that were scattered that's going to be gathered now in these last days. Ezekiel eleven seventeen. 17, therefore saith, this is what the sovereign Lord said. I will gather you from the nations, nations, and bring you back from the countries, back, bring you back from the countries where you have been scattered. And I will give you back the land of Israel again. So you was scattered to many nations, to many countries. And I'm going to give you back the land of Israel again. I, God is going to give you back. It's impossible for these other people that are living there to say that they are the Israelites, because they've never been scattered to all nations ever, ever. Nobody else has ever been scattered to all nations. I think God did that. I don't think I know it was precisely done this way so that no one else could ever brag or boast or no one else can ever claim to be us, even though they do it anyway. Right. But if you read, if you research, if you look into it, it's no way. Once, once you wake up to this knowledge, there's no way you can go back to it. You say, well, it's impossible. No one else was ever scattered. He wanted to make sure that no one that they know. No, no, no. It's a, there was one cataclysmic event ever in the history of the world 400 years ago where these people were scattered to all nations on slave ships. That's never happened to no one else ever again. And it never will, never will happen. And this is why now you can point to who exactly who they are by saying this happened to them. So who are the Israelites? We are the Israelites. The white Mexicans are not the Israelites, right? Uh, uh, what do they say? Non-white Hispanics or white Hispanics are not Israelites. Non-white Hispanics are Israelites. The Native Americans are not Israelites. The Black Native Americans are Israelites. Anybody that's melanated is an Israelite, but anybody that is not is not an Israelite. Now, they can cleave to us. They can um, be grafted into us, into our society, into our nation, but they are not the bloodline Israelites. The bloodline Israelites look like me, look like you. They are melanated, right? They are melanated people. All the Africans are not Israelites, but many of them are. But the ones specifically that were scattered throughout the world on ships, we are the Israelites. The ones that were scattered throughout the world on ships, we are the Israelites. That's who the Israelites are. There's no reason to try to convince somebody in these last days, in these last days, right? Why would I try to convince you in these last days? This is left up from this point on, it's on, it's on you now, right? It's on you. All right, y'all. Um, like I said, I just wanted to do a kind of an introductory video. And I'm going to do several little videos and clips and things of that nature to give us more of an understanding, not just who we are, but our faith and kind of like a, a basis for where to start. And the basis to, for where to start is that we are the Israelites. We're the only ones that's been scattered. We're the only ones who fit the curses it, uh, historically, right? Historically, just looking at who was in Egypt, it was black slaves that were in Egypt. That was us, right? Look at all the pyramids that are built in America. Those were us that built those pyramids. The pyramids, that, the Mayans, the Aztecs, the Incas, those are our people. They were black. They were dark. Those are our people, right? They came over here. They were the other tribes that came over here. 
right? Those are our people, right? I can go on and on and on and on uh, uh, into that, but I don't want you to meditate yourself because I think a lot of times what people lose themselves, and that's why I wanted to give an introductory message, and like, that's why I'm not trying to convince you, because I think where a lot of people lose themselves at is trying to know the exact person, the exact thing. Oh, no, no, this is us, right? Exactly. You don't need, you need to know who you are. You need to know who we are. You need to know the basis of it. And then you can build on those foundation of those blo building blocks if you want to. But know that my way, God, like God said, my ways are above your ways. My thoughts are above your thoughts. So you're never really going to know everything about God, right? There's some things that are always going to be hidden from you. But know that we are the Israelites, all right? And these are the last days. So you will see the glory of the Lord during these days. You will see these miracles and you will see these prophecies sooner than later in these days. All right, talk to y'all soon. Shalom. Because 98% of everybody out there believes that their root starts in Africa. So they call themselves black African Americans. And really what they should be talking themselves is they are what? The Hebrews and the Jews of the original temple of the city of David. Amen. So you wonder why you're hated. Because it's what's in your blood. See, you don't know who you are. Even, even as I tell the black culture this, it's like, you know, sh uh, just, you know, don't bring it up. And so what I do with my big mouth, I bring it up. Why? Why should you be ashamed of your culture? Hey, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. If you haven't already, please go subscribe to my new exclusive content page at leodunsonministries.com. You can also go to leodunson.com and hit the subscribe button. But that's leodunsonministries.com. Thank you so much and may the glory of God, his blessings and his purpose be upon you. Shalom.